Hello YouTube. So I went to the John Mayer solo show in Amsterdam last Friday, and I'm super excited to share my experience with you and do a rundown of the entire show. Most of you subscribed to the channel know me as a tech war geek, but I've been a Mayer fan for much longer, uh, even way before I ever heard of uh, Gore-Tex, except for maybe the, the Seinfeld joke in the 90s. Anyway, so when he started to follow me on Instagram about, I think, two or maybe even three years ago already. Uh, that was obviously completely surreal for me. I even had some like little nerd exchanges with him, but I'll tell you about them in a sec. About the show, I was planning on taking shots myself and I kind of did, but the, they really sucked because my angle was uh, really not good. So I will mainly be taking a look at videos shot by other people from YouTube. But of course, I will put the links to the original videos in the description below because I'm not going to like show the whole thing. So you can check the entire clips out on their channels and support their channels too. But I thought it would be nice to have like an overview of the entire night. And also I'll try to do some multi-cam shots and maybe even improve the sound and the image a little bit so there will be like a technical advantage of watching the clips on in, in this video okay so before i get into the show i would like to create a little context of my relationship with john mayer uh, back in 2001 uh, I, I, when i was still in high school uh, i was in a few little bands and just kind of started to learn to play the guitar. And mind you, YouTube didn't even exist back then. And I was watching MTV, which back then was still music television. And I saw the video of No Such Thing and that just blew my mind and really inspired me to try to get better at guitar, even though I still suck. Partly, probably because of talent, but also because I was, I had to switch to a different camera for a second because the other one kept overheating. So I hope this image is okay too. It's my iPhone, but I think it looks okay. What was I talking about? So I could never be so dedicated as John to learning the guitar because I have just too many things that I like and my ADHD uh, won't let me focus enough on one thing. So I was a really big fan from the get-go. I saw him perform twice in that era uh, in Germany. I believe. I think one time he was also on his own solo, I believe, or maybe with just the one bass player or something. I mean, back then he was just starting out, so it was just like a small venue and it was very intimate situation. So that was really cool. I actually don't think that many people knew who he was back then here in Amsterdam or, or here in Holland. I was living in Amsterdam at that time. No, I was not. I was in high school, so that was vague. Wow. It's a long time ago, okay? I'm old. Also, probably I wasn't really sober all of the time back then. So fast forward to 2021, I posted a picture on Instagram and saw that John Mayer had reacted to it. At first I thought it was some kind of joke uh, from a fake account, but it wasn't. It was actually him and I believe uh, that he also then start following me. I don't know exactly how he came by the picture, but I presume Errolson uh, reposted it and he saw it on his stories and he probably saw that Errolson follows me. So then maybe, I guess he thought that was enough reason to uh, follow me as well. For the John Mayer fans watching this who don't know who Errolson Hugh is, he's the principal designer of the fashion brand Acronym, which is kind of the leading brand in the techwear genre and John has been a big fan of that brand for quite a while and has become good friends with Errolson too. They even collaborated on a sneaker commercial in 2018. And John is known to be one of the most avid collectors of the brand that used to make very exclusive pieces. Then a year later, he posted a TikTok video of him jumping into a pool, uh, or his pool, not a pool, his pool, with all of his acronym clothing on, 
uh, on a day that it rained, which is like an insider's joke that techware nerds in California run outside in all of their in their Gore-Tex outfits uh, whenever it starts to rain because it almost never rains in California, making it kind of useless to have Gore-Tex at all. So then my girlfriend suggested it would be funny if I if I copied that video in, in TikTok fashion and then jump into a canal with my acronym clothing on. So I did, and then again, John reacted to it. But this also created a bit of an uproar in the techware community because people were really kind of mad of me supposedly destroying my acronym clothing with water. Destroying waterproof clothing by jumping into water. <laughs> it even inspired my number one hater, Ian90, to make a meme of me, uh, which I found hilarious. But I digress. So every once in a while, I would have some contact with John. We spoke a little bit about acronym. That's how I learned that the P34 is his favorite pant ever, and he owns every iteration of it, but he probably owns every acronym piece anyway. So I also shared my appreciation of the Silver Sky I got uh, last year, which is still absolutely, I mean, it's my favorite guitar ever. I, I'm gonna do a video about it somewhere in the near future. And last year when the tour was announced and I was able to get tickets. I also told him that I was excited. I was coming to Amsterdam, uh, which he was too. Unfortunately, he did not come hang out with me, but you know, his loss, I guess. Okay, so after this humble brag, uh, let's get on to the show because most of you probably came here to see a bit of the show. If you have time though, I would really appreciate it if you could give me a like and subscribe. It would really, I'm trying to revive this channel a little bit. I've I've been silent for for quite a while, so it would really help me to uh, get back into that algorithm. Also, I will be incorporating more music stuff too. As you can see, I have quite some instruments here. And that's also a subject I really like to talk about. Besides the Silver Sky, I also have the Adam Jones signature uh, Les Paul for John Mayer and tool content in the future. You could stick around. So John started with XO, the Beyonce cover, cool song. Not necessarily one of my favorites. I did immediately hear his voice, it sounded really good. Singing has improved a lot through the years. Anyway, I remember his singing in the early days was quite airy, which has been made fun of already a lot and even he has made some jokes about it uh, during his some shows. But still to me, John Mayer is a guitarist, guitarist, guitar player, uh, in the first place. He then proceeded with It Shouldn't Matter, but it does. A song I actually really don't like uh, at all. Also, at that point, there was, uh, I was starting to get quite annoyed because there was a woman uh, next to me who was just screaming at John about every minute. That's also when I realized that that was the result of the, the way the show was set up because at the solo shows, it's allowed to come in with banners with song titles on them so you can do like a request. But beforehand, I didn't realize that, that people are just gonna like shout song titles all the time, which is super annoying. The funny thing I could see at my angle, by the way, I was almost kind of like on the side behind the stage. He had monitors in front of him with the song lyrics on them maybe songs he hasn't played in like a really long time and forgot the lyrics so someone's behind a computer back there if he goes and plays songs that were not planned so that was funny uh what was not so funny is the fact that i was also just behind the screens so i couldn't see the screens at all i didn't really realize that when i chose these seats. I chose the seats because they were kind of close to the stage and because they were not like 500 euros, like the, like the floor seats, which is just insane to me. Anyway, the next song was Love on the Weekend, which he played after some banter, which is always nice. He's known to do so, but especially in this setting, it's extra intimate. Have I sung into a, into a phone to prove to someone I really was me? Yes, I have. It has to happen every once in a while. If you want to just skip right to it, where they're sure it's you, you sing a little bit, and then they're sure. Should have stopped at the last banter. 
<laughs> I think this song was actually really nice and different in the acoustic version. The studio version being a song with quite a lot of production, a lot of layers and effects, but bare bone, it really kind of resonated with me. Especially the way he played the instrumental gave me kind of like D David Gray vibes. Next was I Don't Trust Myself with Loving You. Not really that interesting acoustically, to be honest. At this point, I was also really fed up with the screaming chick, so I asked her if she could stop screaming all the time. To which she responded, well, I'm just I'm just enjoying myself. To which I said, yeah, but you know, you're, you're not alone. Like all these people around you are also trying to enjoy themselves. And then she looked around at all the faces, luckily confirming my uh, message. Fortunately, she folded. She kind of stopped screaming all the time, you know, which was fine. And she stopped just in time because then one of my personal favorites started, Neon. One of the first songs ever released on his uh, Inside Once Out EP that I still have on compact disc. But I think still one of the best songs he ever wrote and without a doubt, one of the most unique ever written by anyone. Infamous for it being very difficult to play on the guitar because of the rhythm technique, uh, but also because of the chord grips, because John has like these huge thumbs, uh, which most people don't. He's like the Rachmaninoff of 21st century singer songwriter guitar pop i still cannot play it at all i mean i never really really tried but i, I, I can't play it so it impresses me every time i see it even after more than 20 years and at the end he even uh, sped it up a little bit uh to show off which worked that was kind of cool <laughs> Then after that, Who Says, he played Who Says. Uh, another favorite of mine, 
At this point, I was really into the show. I saw I'm really made for the acoustic, so perfect in this setting. And also one that's not that easy to play uh, rhythmically. I'm still trying to master it, but the rhythm is really hard. Then Waiting on the Day was played, not gonna lie, barely know this song. I actually have not listened to Paradise Valley uh, very much. So I then decided to go get a drink, <laughs> get another cocktail for 10,000 euros. This is a song uh, about extreme denial, <laughs> waiting for someone to be someone they're not. There's a lot of heart and soul in it, and there's a lot of stupidity in it, but there's a lot of stupidity in love. It's a lot of stupidity and hopeless romanticism. But it's a divine stupidity. And I appreciate it sometimes. And I like it when I sing this song. That it's cool to be hopeful. Even in a futile situation. Hope can feel kind of nice. Even when you're waiting on the day. After that, he played Speak of Me, uh, which I believe was a requested song. Now the cover of the moon and the star, and the cover of the moon and the star, and the music on that radio ain't supposed to make me feel alone. But I'd like to know, I have to learn to let it go. Show me something I can do. But I wasn't back from the bar yet, so I, I completely missed that one, which was actually fine and perfect timing because when I returned, Olivia started which again is one of my favorites that I kind of recently started to learn to play. It has such a catchy riff and, and vibe. And I like that it's quite modern and poppy sounding song, even though it's essentially just a 12 bar blues. Also a song that is very elevated in the acoustic version, because I think the studio version is actually a bit boring in comparison. I really like the acoustic version he did uh, on his own channel, the one with the, with the cowboy hat. I like that one uh, the best actually, because he plays the, the riff differently, or he has, he plays a different riff of the chords, uh, which I really like. <laughs> which he did not play uh, on stage uh, Friday, but still the live version he did in Amsterdam was also really good. And it was also a really great moment again for John to display his mastering of soloing while continuing playing the bass notes and chord hits and keeping impeccable rhythm at all at once. Like this is what I came to see, you know, and uh, it still is very inspiring to me to get better at this because I find that really difficult and he has the ability to like casually sound like two guitar players at once it's i think that's really amazing I think it's something 